I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. Uh, when I edit videos, I use Adobe Premiere Pro on Windows 10, and I'm frequently mocked by Apple Mac users, particularly iMac users, who know all about the power of RX 580 AMD graphics because they say, goodness me, you Premiere Pro boys, you get no benefit from the graphics in your hardware whatsoever, to which I say, that seems peculiar. When you use Premiere, you have the option of either using software only, which is a mugs game, or you can use the graphics power. Uh, that's CUDA for uh, NVIDIA or OpenCL for AMD. And if you run a system monitor while you're outputting the video in particular, you can see the processor sits there humming away constantly at full chat and the graphics blat into life frequently up to 100%, but uh, 40 to 70% a lot of the time. And 40 to 70% of a GTX 980 or 1080 or some such, that's a lot of graphics power. So clearly the graphics play their part, obviously so. Uh, now in, in my uh, work with a video, I've bumped up my existing PC, which is a Core i7 on X99. I've gone from four to six to eight cores, plus hyper-threading, so up to 16 threads. Uh, and each time you bump up the processor power or the processor speed, you get an immediate return. On the graphics side of things, I was never quite so sure what was going on. I started life with GTX 980, which I required to drive dual 4K panels, and went to GTX 1080, and it felt like it was an improvement, but Honestly, empirically, I had no evidence for that. So when I put together this, my next PC, which I've been slowly getting to grips with, which is AMD Threadripper, many more CPU cores, I thought let's do some proper graphics work. Let's give you a quick rundown of where I've got to so far with my Threadripper PC. So the case is now familiar to KitGuru readers. It's a Fractal Design Define R6. The motherboard is ASRock X399 Tai Chi, and the processor is AMD Threadripper 1920. X, that's the 12 core model, uh, slightly more budget than the 16 core, but still a lot of cores and fairly expensive. We've got 32 gig of G-Skill Flare X DDDR4 3200 megahertz memory, which uh, is essentially two Ryzen uh, packages, so four DIMMs. And then we have a Seasonic Prime Titanium 600 watt fanless power supply powering it. We at KitGuru love the uh, 600 watt fanless power supply. And then there's a Samsung M.2 uh, 960 Evo SSD running, as I say, Windows 10, the Pro version. But I, I very much doubt as a difference between home Pro versions of the OS. And then there's a whole bunch of custom loop hardware on it. Uh, now, this build has evolved from when I reviewed the Fractal Design case, uh, because I want to try different bits of hardware for my own uh, curiosity as much as anything. But also in this instance, because I'm uh, back to backing three different air-cooled graphics cards. Uh, so uh, I had to sort of change the loop somewhat to give plenty of clearance, particularly for this Sapphire uh, RX uh, Vega 64 graphics card, because it's a long, beefy card, the Nitro. This is the card that, uh, same card that Dominic reviewed. And uh, he had sort of mixed views on the Sapphire, which uh, is that Sapphire's done as much work as they possibly can with the uh, Vega 64. Nonetheless, it remains juicy. And in terms of performance, you have to question whether it actually matches GTX 1080, uh, which is, I'm coming at this from a different angle, not the gaming point of view, but video editing, but we shall see. So the custom loop here, uh, it fulfills a couple of functions. I've put in two 240mm radiators there by Hardware Labs. They're Black Eyes GTS 240s, so they're 30mm thick. And that uh, addresses a couple of the questions I actually had after my Fractal Design uh, review, which is how much cooling can you stick in the case? And if you look, you'll see essentially the answer is, depending on how you line up the radiators, a pair of 360s really shouldn't be a problem. These 240s go in without any difficulty. They're relatively thin models. Quite clearly, the front could accommodate a thicker radiator radiator if you felt the need. On the uh, radiators I've got four 120mm noise blocker e-loop fans, uh, then we've got the same uh, pump reservoir uh, setup I had before which is Singularity Computer's Proteum top uh, on an Aqua Computer D5 pump and then a Proteum 250mm reservoir. Reservoir mounts are also by Singularity Computer's ethereal singles. The coolant I've gone for is Mayhem's X1 Black. Uh, because I thought I'd give it a whirl. I do like what they do with their black, and the X1 is much blacker uh, 
than the regular uh, Pastel from Mayhem's. The case fan at the rear is Noise Blocker Black Silent Pro 120mm. The CPU block continues to be EK Supremacy Evo Threadripper because I'm still waiting for my block from watercool.de after weeks and weeks and weeks. Hopefully it'll be here sooner rather than later. A quick update. I'm going to poke this piece of video in the middle here. Uh, I started shooting this video before I went away for CES. While I was away at CES, a package arrived in my absence. Here it is, a watercool block. Look, Heat Killer 4, a great big block of shiny nickel loveliness. Absolutely gorgeous. Cannot wait to get to grips with that. But hurrah, it's here. Anyway, back to the video. And then I finally switched over from soft tubing to uh, alpha cool hard tubing. It's PETG, it's 13mm OD, 10mm ID. I have to say soft tubing is a lot easier to, well, it's obviously a lot easier to work with. It's also a lot easier to make changes to the system. Uh, there's no denying soft tubing doesn't look great, but in terms of function, it, it cools just as well as hard tubing. It's a heck of a sight less work. Nonetheless, here we go. Now, the reason I've used hard tubing, apart from the fact I wanted to get to grips with it and to see how it looked in this particular build, is that I'm going to be reviewing an Alpha Cool Ice Coffer, which is their hard tube bending kit. Uh, and I didn't fancy bending my first tube live on camera as a noob and make a complete horlix of the thing. So this has kind of been a bit of a trial run for me. This is not, as I say, the final build because I'm going to be liquid cooling my chosen graphics card and I'm going to be using a different CPU block. So this is a work in progress. But as I say, it's also to try a few different things out. So how did I get on with Premiere? Well, the first thing I did was I used a project, uh, an Asus laptop video that I've already done on my own PC, which is Core i7-5960X. So that's eight cores running at 3.3 gigahertz uh, with a GTX 1080 graphics card. Ran that and to output the video took just over one hour, 62 minutes. Then I switched over to the Threadripper system with uh, an air-cooled GTX 980 graphics card, going back to my old 980 and it took 43 minutes. So quite clearly more CPU power, quite clearly less GPU power. Uh, we don't know quite how the mix of that's affecting it at the moment, but that's a heck of a step up, and I was a happy man. Then I switched out the GTX 980 for a GTX 1080 Ti. A lot more graphics power, we can agree. More shaders running a lot faster. And the time dropped from 43 minutes 16 to 43 minutes 12 which is obviously within margin of error and shows that within the NVIDIA world, changing your graphics card makes absolutely no difference. I was frankly quite depressed about this news. On the plus side, it does mean you don't need to spend a load of money on the graphics card in your video uh, editing machine. So in that sense, good news. But, you know, you kind of want all the benefit you can get. And then I switched over to the uh, Vega 64 Sapphire card to see what benefit that yielded. And I went from 43 minutes 12 to 42 minutes 48. Now, 24 seconds is worth having, but I cannot honestly say that that is a, a clear-cut advantage. It's better, but is that also margin of error? I'd say very likely. And it's quite a big change internally. We've gone from uh, CUDA to OpenCL, and yet, a minimal change very strange the downside is that the power draw shot up so with the nvidia systems uh, i was running either 340 or 350 watts under load uh, with the vega 470 an extra 120 watts to save 24 seconds uh, out of 40 something minutes not a great advantage uh, and really what that says is that yeah sapphire you've done your best with vega 64 but i don't think it has any place in premiere pro and in fact, it may be saying that uh, in my world, Premiere Pro might actually be a misstep. Perhaps I have to, uh, perhaps I have to move to a different video editing package such as uh, Sony Vegas or some such, but, uh, or DaVinci Resolve, which is getting really good reports. As things stand, Adobe Premiere, that looks like the problem here. It's not a question of should you use NVIDIA or should you use AMD. It looks to me like the question is, should I be using Adobe Premiere at all? And the answer is probably not. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. I'm Neil Waldock. This is my PC, and that was my thoughts on video editing with Adobe Premiere.